Okay, so I'm going to basically uh, show you some examples of um, some more ha more harder examples compared to my previous videos of how you would fill in um, the blanks or fill in current in, in, in certain ammeters and voltage in certain voltmeters and, and work out the total resistance in some circuits. Okay, so first things first, what about the ammeter here? I'm going to start off with an easy one, okay. If this was two amps, okay, what would be the amps going to each of these bulbs? Well, it would be one amp and one amp. If these bulbs were the same size and they were the same make and they were bought at the same time, meaning they've got the same resistance, meaning the current sees both um, as equal resistors and it doesn't make, uh, make a choice it doesn't decide to go through, or, or it doesn't decide that one lamp is easier than the other. Okay, is what I want to say. Now, what about if I have exactly the same, um, so two ammeters here, this time I have one lamp here, and then two lamps on the bottom one. Okay, so what I want you to think about now is lamps is like small mountains, okay? And let's say this time I've got uh, six amps coming from this end of the battery and passing through this lamp. So, this is one mountain, this is two mountains, okay? I'm going to tell you another rule. Let's say the electrons coming down here, okay? Remember, conventional current is what we're talking about in this case. So, actually, electrons are not coming down here. But let's say the positive charges that they thought were present in the, in the olden days are coming down from this positive end, and they want to get all around the circuit to the minus end of the battery, okay? So, what is going to happen? It sees one mountain down this pathway and another uh, two mountains down this pathway. So let's say there's six electrons lining up or six uh, positive charges lining up here. They see they see the crossroads. Okay, they see one mountain, but the rule is this time they can only go one at a time. Okay, so obviously uh, most of them are going to pick this mountain. Okay, because they they have to get to the minus sign. And they say, okay, this is an easy pathway, let's go through this pathway. Okay, but eventually about the four, the fourth or the fifth person or fifth uh, electron or positive charge thinks, oh, actually, this is taking far too long. Um, actually, I can have a head start. I can actually start with a second path and I can actually go over these two mountains and hopefully I'll get to the other side before uh, the fourth person here, here who has to wait in line to, uh, to go up this mountain and to get to that point. Okay, so they, I want you to think of, of the electrons or charges in that way. Okay, so essentially what happens is we will have four amps going down this way and then two amps going down this way. Okay, and the ratio is if you want to think about it mathematically, you would have to do as one, two, three lamps altogether. Okay, so you could have done six divided by three, which is two then you would then have to multiply two, because if there are two lamps here, okay, then I'm going to do two times two, which gives me four. Then I need to put that number that I've worked out to the top branch, okay? So if you, if you want to think about it that way, you can do it this way. Or just think about it ra uh, as ratios. This is twice as difficult as this pathway, so therefore the current, twice as much current, going to pass through this way okay resistance and current are that indirectly proportional to each other okay I'll give you another example uh, just to get yourself familiar with it okay so this time my ammeter I'm going to have two uh, lamps there I have believe it or not four down here okay this time What's the current? Okay, same thing, six amps. Well, again, this is four twice as much resistance as this, so therefore, this is still going to be uh, four amps, and this is going to be two amps. Okay. Again, more electrons, more charges are going to are going to decide. Actually, this is the easier route to get to to this negative end of the battery. However. Um, 
some elections are going to decide, some po some of the positive charges are going to going to decide. Actually, I don't want to wait too long in the queue. Let me just start off with this pathway. Uh, let me go through the mountains, and I'll, I'll get to uh, to this end of the battery um, in a faster period of time compared to it compared to if I just waited in in this line. Okay, and waited till everybody passed through these two mountains before it was my turn. Okay, so that's how current works in. Uh, series and parallel circuits. Okay, what about voltage? Okay, so voltage. Um, again, this is recap of an earlier video, but just to show you, that was six volts, and I had my voltmeter here. This would be three volts and three volts. Okay. Um, hopefully that's pretty straightforward. If it was like this. Okay, another example. So this time I've got three bulbs. Okay, here, three voltmeters, two bulbs. Uh, two volt meters and one bulb and, and one volt meter. If I now say this was six volts, okay, because let's ignore the bottom two because this is still in a series circuit, we can say it's two volts, two volts, two volts, and that would be correct. So two volts, two volts, two volts, okay. What about this one? Six volts, well, it's going to be three volts, three volts, so three volts, three volts, and lastly, because there's only one lamp. This is going to be actually six volts. Okay, so this is going to be the brightest, uh, not so bright, and then even even dimmer. Okay, so basically, you need to see, you need to. Uh, I'm I'm basically combining the the rule for voltage in series and parallel in this one example. Okay, so basically, if you get this example, you should have no problems with understanding how voltage is split in series and parallel circuits because it basically has everything in this circuit. Okay, right. Lastly, let's do some resistor practice. So I'm going to work out the total resistance um, in these resistors here. So I'm going to do, again, this is a recap of an earlier video, but I just want to show you a more complex example. Okay, so actually, we don't need to know what the voltage is if I tell you the values of these resistors. Right, so, 2 ohms, 2 ohms, 2 ohms, 3 ohms. I'm going to combine both rules for my resistor, um, resistance, the total resistance in a series and a parallel circuit, okay? So in series, it's literally, so R total in series, okay, in series is going to be equal to 2 plus 2. And I'm actually going to leave a blank because I'm going to basically use the parallel uh, rule first to work out what that total resistance is and then I'm going to treat that as a single resistor. So, I'm just going to leave this blank for a second, and I'm going to do, remember in our total in parallel is this rule, so I'm going to do 1 over 2, 1 over 2, plus 1 over 3, okay? So let's, let's add this up. Common denominator is going to be 6, so this is going to be 3 over 6, plus 2 over 6, okay? This is 5 over 6 equals one over our total. So common mistake that a lot of students make is they think, okay, well, I've worked out the addition of these two fractions, well, that's my R total. It actually isn't. R total, remember, is on the bottom. I need to make that the subject, so I multiply it to that side, and then I get six over five. So actually, it's six over five ohms, okay? So if you want to remember the rule, okay, well, I just need to flip these numbers, um, to, to give me our total, you can you can do that. Okay. Now remember, I left a blank. I'm going to add this six over five to there. Okay. So six over five, and that's my answer. That's going to be my. It's going to be four and six five ohms. Okay. Which is five point two ohms. 
Okay, so that's the answer there. Right, one final example, trying to make it uh, as complicated as the exam can make it. So. Okay, so I'm going to say two ohms, two ohms, two ohms. I'm going to say each one of these are two ohms, okay? Remember, ohms is the unit of resistance. So let's break this down. Let's do the hard one first. So, first, firstly, let's work out there is total resistance of this mini parallel circuit. So, I'm going to do 1 over R total equals 1 over 2 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 2. Well, it's going to be 4 over 2, which is 2 ohms. Okay? So, what about this one? So, uh, actually, hang on. Remember what I said? See, I made the mistake. I need to flip over. So, 1 over R total equals 2 ohms, but that translates to R total being a half. Okay, so it's a half. Um, right, um, let's do this one. So 1 over R total is going to be a half over a half, which is 2 over 2, which is 1 ohm. If I flip 1 over 1, it's still 1. So R total in this case is going to be also 1 ohm. Okay. Um, now I just need to add, go back to my circuit, so I need to add 2 plus the 1 which I've worked out here plus the half or 1 over 2 which I worked out here plus the 2 plus the 2. So it gives me, so the R total of the entire circuit okay, is equal to 2 plus 1 from here plus the half from here. 0 0.5 plus 2 plus the 2 plus, sorry, plus 2 plus 2, that gives me 3.5, sorry, 3, 4, 7.5 ohms is my final answer. Okay? And that's the uh, most difficult arrangement of resistors you, you, you could get in your exam. Okay? So basically, that's just a bit of practice using those two rules, and that's it.